Yes, people, welcome back to the channel. The Race for Europe show is back. It's us four, but we have got more joining us. It's rush, rush, rush tonight. I've literally just walked in the door myself, so it was going to be a late one and a last minute one. Uh, listen, there's a lot to talk about tonight, but we're going to try and break it down into the best we can to try and allow everyone to contribute tonight because it's a late one and we want to make sure that we uh, actually get some beauty sleep because looking at the absolute devils on here, they all need it. Um, big up to Dan United, big up to Lawless, big up to Errol. We've got LB is going to be jump on after his uh, reaction show for Man City. You won tonight which is a shame. We've got Pete on his way. And I think Billy is maybe joining us from Bali, um, which is about eight o'clock over there. So uh, if he's actually woke up, then he'll join us up. Uh, but he is on holiday, so fair play to him. Uh, listen, lads, let's get straight into it. It was an unbelievable weekend as far as a few teams were concerned, but some of the people on this channel won't be too happy. Um, that's why me and Dan are on top right now. I tell you, uh, we're looking down at the moment at the two that uh, we've managed to defeat for this weekend. Um, listen, it was a great, great, great game for Arsenal Football Club yesterday. And it was a great game for Manchester United. So let's start and let's divulge it. We've obviously last played question. against each other. Was it a great game or a great result? I feel oh. like there needs to be a distinction. There needs which to be a one? distinction. Which, which, which one? Which one? Which one? In the, in the Arsenal-Liverpool game, was it a great game or a great result? Well, we can ask the neutrals that because obviously it was a great game for Arsenal. I don't think it was a great game for Liverpool. I thought they were pretty shocking, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, but I don't know if the neutral enjoyed it or not, as I'm not a neutral. But um, we'll start with that game. Um, let's go to the neutrals first and ask that question to start with, but also look at the importance of the actual result itself and what it means um, moving forward. Lawless, let's start with you. You're not really bothered by Liverpool or Arsenal, I imagine. You obviously hate Arsenal, but if you had to pick a team, you'd obviously say Liverpool would win it. But as a neutral, what did you make of it and what does it mean for um, Arsenal, Liverpool and Manchester City at the top? Means nothing. Means nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great, it's a great result in isolation. Celebrate it as a, as a result that you will remember as a game that'll be like, oh, remember that game, uh, Liverpool at home? That was a great one. What a great result uh, when we beat them. But you won't look back at it and go, oh yeah, that was the pivotal game in our title race because you're not going to win the title. Um, I Would turned it, it off. If Arsenal would have lost it though. Well, I think yeah, yeah. It, well, it. So you, it did you're not going to win the title. It did yeah, mean you're not so. going to win the title. No, but you're not going to win the title either way. But if you would have lost, it probably would have quietened a few more of your fans up a bit more. Now you've won that game, your fans are louder. I turned it off after the Allison mistake because I realised like this is not a serious game. Like the defending <laughs> is embarrassing. This is not serious, so it's not worth my time. So. Yeah, like I said, but look, by all means, enjoy it. But let's just slow your rolls. Man City, have well, I see the Arsenal fans going, oh, thank you, Mo Pai. Thank you. Thank you for what? Why are you Why are you celebrating? Why are you watching Man City's results? You ain't winning the league. Don't be watching what Man City do. You need to be watching Spurs, right? You need to be worrying about top four race. Okay, yes, you beat this Liverpool side. It is a great result. Still, they're out without Big Mo Salah, yeah? Listen, Liverpool will go and they'll kick on from here. But I said, you know, I'm not saying don't celebrate. Celebrate. But it's, if, tell me I'm lying then. Arsenal fans, are you winning the league? Tell me I'm lying. Tell me. Someone well, that's contradict what, me. That's Come what people have got to ask in the chat. Because there's a mm. lot of people in the chat that are saying they don't agree with you. They think you're chatting rubbish and it's out of order. I, I disagree that we're in a uh, kind of, we need to look out for Tottenham and Villa and Newcastle and United and West Ham. I don't really think we've ever been like, wow, I think we might be coming sixth or seventh here. I've never looked at that. But I certainly believe that if we would have lost that game, we'd have been out of the title race. That's absolute facts for me. I know it's only eight points and mathematically nothing's done in February. But at the same time, I really believe that this was the biggest result that Arsenal could have had and it was bigger for Arsenal to win than for Liverpool and I said that all along I said that to Errol I said that for us it was absolutely key and for Liverpool they could have taken the draw and even the loss and thought you know what it's frustrating City have gained on us they're probably going to win it but Liverpool could afford the loss we couldn't and we didn't and I feel like we deserved it personally uh, Dan United I'll come to you before I bring it to Errol um, what did you make of that what, does, what did you learn from yesterday? Just salt. Just so much salt. I mean, listening to Carragher. Oh, my. This is the same guy who every time Klopp runs and does something, he's like, look at Klopp. Look at Klopp. And 
just emotion in it if you I, I get it it was over the top and i get that but it's look we'd moan if it wasn't in football it means a lot to the players i want to go to errol um 28th of january uh 1633 received a message in the group from you saying lad come the end of the season you're gonna be quad father i want to ask you how you feel and maybe you think that's still the case. Yeah, I didn't stutter. I didn't stutter. <laughs> so just, just get ready. Just, just know, get ready. If, if, if that's what, if this, if this is what we're doing now, if this is what the race for Europe is descended into, get ready. I'm fine with it. Descended into I, what? I've made my bed. Quad father settings are pending. Okay. Just because, just because we've lost two, right, not even two, not even yet. I was gonna say, not even one, two games all season. You wanna, you wanna come off mute, and you just wanna now start asking some. I haven't been mute all questions. season, mate. No, no, I'm just, I'm just I saying. I just find it very. I find <laughs> it very. I've been muted all season. I've, I find it very. I've said, I've said week in, week out. We got humble error last season, and then all of a sudden this season, <laughs> something happened. You just, you just. Like, we came hey, back, we resurrected, we did like Jesus from Lazarus back again. Lazarus? <laughs> what is it? Chris Eubank talking. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, man. Oh, oh, can I add to that, Errol? Can I just add to that, add to that, Errol, right? And this ain't me baiting you out because, you know, you're my bro, right? For me, there's two ways this goes. Mm hmm. Congratulations, Liverpool. You beat Arsenal. They're no longer in the title race. The other result is, well done, Arsenal. You've actually managed for the first time this season to get over the line in a challenge that you haven't been able to do, whether it be St. James Park, Villa Park and uh, Anfield, to be fair. No, we didn't lose there, but we drew there, right? But what I've heard is actually quite salty and crazy from the media. And mm. I'm the first to sit there and say, like, Arsenal fans need to just calm a little bit. But I've been quite stunned by the reaction from the media. I sat there looking yesterday at the Sky Sports studio and it was basically everyone throwing toys in the pram going, no, this was not the result we wanted. We wanted Arsenal out of the title race. Bloody hell, let's just have a go at them. Celebrate. Oh, OK, you're over celebrating. Get that camera, put it away, get down the tunnel. I don't care what it is, just give them something. Do not praise that team. Calm down, we beat Liverpool. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can enjoy it, we can celebrate, we can go, go take pictures, That's whatever you want. They've not run around the Emirates going, we've won the World Cup. Erdogan's no, having a laugh with a photographer and Jamie Carragher's putting it on his bloody Twitter. What the I, hell is going on here? Absolute uh, embarrassment, man. I'm sorry. And I sat there and I thought, no, no, actually, I'm the first to question our fan base. I'm the first to question Mikel Arteta and the club. But when we've just beaten Liverpool, which everyone writ us off to do, by the way, yeah, mm -hmm. they all wanted us out of the title race. Everyone laughed after eight points is done. <laughs> and now it's like, well, it don't mean anything. Like, what the hell are you over celebrating? Well, it don't matter. Imagine if we'd have lost. It wouldn't have been that. It would have been absolute chaos for Arsenal. And now the but media what, are sitting what, what there. What clown Eddie saying how doing we doing down there, man? What was that clown Eddie doing down there? That guy ain't done nothing for five months. The guy's had five months off. Yeah, like he's done something. What's he doing down there? High-fiving and hugging. Who are you talking like about? Edu. Edu. Like he's part of the team. He ain't done nothing. He's had all this time off. He's getting down there like he'd done so. Like that, so out of the whole of that day yesterday, Edu was the one who wound you up. What the hell? Well, you know, just the players. Lawless was in, a, was in a bad mood yesterday anyway, so I'm trying to feel like anything would have set him off. Listen, <laughs> the, Arteta, the players, they all done something. That guy has had all this time off, done nothing. He wants to get his face up in the cameras, yeah? The guy should have been more proactive in January, and maybe you would have been serious about this title. You know what I mean? Well, so. Potts, Potts, <laughs> you were never going to get through a victory about Lord is trying to take some souls on the way down. He's going to he's going to try to do something to tarnish that victory. He knows I'm right. Am I, though. Am I being, <laughs> am I, listen, he's 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 not even he's not even rattled me about Edu because I'm not even a big fan of him, right? But Pete, I'll come to you as a sensible fan, as I believe someone who's a complete neutral in this, like Dan. Am I being over the top there or was that a bit extreme from the Sky Sports crew? Like, we've just beaten Liverpool. Nobody gave us a, a thing. You, imagine you beating Liverpool or Man City and them going, bloody hell, calm down. It's only a game. Like, calm down. Don't over-celebrate. Like, put your photo, like, camera down. Get down the tunnel and then start putting loads of pictures of Eddie Howe with a camera on your Twitter. Is that just pathetic or what? 
it, yeah, uh, yeah, it is. But but uh, uh, proper uh, loss but is I, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not surprised by it. I don't think anyone else should be because Sky have been doing it for years. Sky have been doing it for years. Sky from week to week. I thought it was from season to season, but it's almost like from week to week now. They'll pick their favorite. They pick the one they want to back, and they'll back it. And if the other team wins, they don't want to know. And and it was very very clear that they backed to Liverpool to win. And then, like you said, most people did. I, I I thought they'd I thought they'd at least get a result. I thought they'd at least get out there with a point um, at the Emirates. But it didn't go the way that Carragher and everyone else wanted it. So therefore, that's why Carragher came out. And the, the thing with Jamie Carragher is he always tries to find a way of justifying it. He can't just put his hands up and say, you know what? Maybe I was over the top. Maybe they do deserve to win that game. They were excellent. They were fantastic. They deserve to win. Maybe I was over the top, but he won't. He'll just try and find a way of justifying it and just brush it under the rug and just let it go. Um, and he's, he's been doing it for years. He's been doing it for years. Um, so I wasn't surprised by it as much as others were, but look, it, it is. Weird. We deserved it, man. We deserved it. You did deserve it. You did. You, you, you boys were fantastic from minute one right the way through. Okay. Apart from, you know, a, a goal that was. It, a bit, I say a bit poor. Talk about um, that. Talk about Saliba, the best in the world, Potts. Talk about best defender in the world. I want to hear well, about that well, guy. We've, we've, best we've, we've, in you, the world. Alisson, Alisson and Van Dijk are the best in the world, so it can happen to everyone, my friend. But that was on Saliba, 100%. And that's two now, and I did say that, that he's had two mistakes, but he's allowed two mistakes. There's credit in the bank, man. He needs to brush up on it and iron it out. I'm a big fan. I don't think Gabriel and Raya did much to help him, mind you, but... Um, it was poor, man. Liverpool couldn't believe their luck. I actually said in my fan cam, I thought Klopp would have gone, I don't know what you think about this, Errol. I think Klopp would have gone in there at 1-0 going, oh, we'll take that. We'll take the 1-0. To go in at 1-1, they must have been thinking, cry, how the hell have we done that? That will take it. But how the hell have we done that? And I'll give you credit, Errol, the first 10 minutes in the second half, I thought, yeah, Liverpool, this is going to be a def different Liverpool. But I felt like Arsenal, personally, dominated the midfield. I thought Jorginho and Rice were exceptional. And I don't think you got your midfield right. And I think you might have even said that to me on the WhatsApp group, that you were worried about your midfield. I thought Kenyatta was all over the place, Martin, then he running ragged. I think Trent as well. I don't know if Trent was fit, if I'm honest. He didn't look fit to me, but I don't know what you, you might have thought. Then Klopp decided to put Luis Diaz at a wing back at right. But I thought, what is he doing? That didn't work. And we just tore down the right-hand side. So, yeah, I think we deserved it. I don't think your front three were amazing. And then we had shocking mistakes from Allison and Van Dyke. I mean, Van Dyke for the first goal, he's an experienced lad. I don't know what he's doing, where he's going. And then the second one, just head it. Like, why are you letting it bounce? It's absolutely crazy. And then Allison comes out and kicks Van Dyke instead of the ball. And it goes, the rest is history, man. And uh, I think we deserved it. I think you text me saying, well played, deserved it. And I don't think there's any complaints from Liverpool as far as up from Arsenal's side. But were you slightly disappointed, bro, from Liverpool point of view? Yeah, you know, make more than, like, when you play one of the top six, all you expect is to leave it all on the pitch. Don't go out there with any excuses. If the team that beats you is the best team on the day, you hold your hands up and you say, do you know what? We got our class. We've beaten by a better side. And, and that's all you can do. It's happened to, you know, uh, Newcastle this season. It's happened to City at times this season. It's happened to Spurs. It's happened to, you know, it's happened to Man U. It's happened to Arsenal. And it was Liverpool's turn yesterday. The thing that disappointed me the most is we weren't fit for purpose yesterday. The lads, it was all over the place. And I can't really pick on or, or, or have a scapegoat as one or two individuals because it was from front to back. Every single player to a man yesterday was absolutely woeful. And that was the, the most alarming thing for me because... It was very Jekyll and Hyde. How we go from that? I, I said it. I was doing a watch along in midweek against Chelsea. And again, I, I was more nervous for the Chelsea game than the Arsenal game, just based on the results of previous games against Chelsea. Nothing to do with, you know, where the teams are currently, just how we've played Chelsea and Chelsea have nullified us. But the one thing that I did notice within that Chelsea game was that was a complete 90-minute performance. We played 90 minutes where we you know, Chelsea were chasing shadows for the entirety of the game. Then you flip that to the Arsenal game and we're miles off the pace, absolutely miles off the pace. And I did see an alarm and not necessarily a stat, but an alarm, an alarm in fact, 
where Arsenal have only played, I think it might have been three games in 23 or something odd days, or might have been closer to 30 days. Liverpool had played three games in the space of a week. So maybe, again, the the going again, going again, going again was just one step too far for us, given the games that we was coming up against and given the opposition that we had to face. But I'm not making excuses for the lies yesterday. I can't make excuses for that type of play. That you can't defend them. There'll be games where you'll see some of your lads and you think, oh, we was all done too there, or, you know, we let ourselves down a little bit and, you know, we didn't get the look. But you can't defend that. That was, in the, that was undefendable. There's not, like, the same way they couldn't defend that second goal, I can't defend that performance. Like, real talk. And the thing that upset me is not so much the defeat, it was the manner of the defeat for me. Because, as you mentioned, I did message you, we were speaking just before the match went kicked off, and I said, I'm, I weren't happy. I seen a lineup, said, I'm not happy with that midfield. For me, that midfield isn't going to be a midfield that I expect to dominate, especially when you drop Jorginho in your midfield to just add, add that little bit more of control more than anything else. He's going to dictate the tempo and the play. We haven't really got anybody to, to combat that. Likewise, the front three, Gakpo, um, Jota and, and, and Diaz, they, they blow hot and cold for me. I know you want to... Jot is great when you can provide something, but if you've got no natural creativity there on offer, it's very hard for Jota to just be that one-man wrecking ball. Um, I think Goldie Gakpo has been played from move from pillar to post, so he doesn't really know his best position yeah, at the minute. Can I can I just bring him up quick? Because I'm I don't want to be harsh on this lad, but I just don't get it. Cody Gakpo, I just I just don't I don't look at him and go, yeah, you're gonna take Liverpool forward, man. I look at him and I just don't think he's good enough for Liverpool. I just don't. I think he's going to be a good player potentially for someone, but he is definitely not. He's, he, he is, for me, I, I've been disappointed too many times now with Gakpo. I've never mm. looked at a performance of him and gone, unplayable, wow. But I don't watch Liverpool like you do, Errol, right? But at the same yeah, time, I've looked at every single other one and gone, Jota, killer, Darwin Nunez, absolute chaos and havoc. Obviously, Diaz, I've seen him where he's been unplayable. And obviously, you've got Mo Salah. With Gakpo, I'm like, you're the weakest one out of that four by quite some way. Um, it's 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 hard to argue the case because I don't think he's had a, a, enough of a run of the games this season. I think Gakpo, towards the back end of last season, really elevated. And, and, and even though he was quite mediocre for, at the time, I thought he brought us back to a, a relatively strong level in terms of attacking options. I think when he played through the middle as a bit of an alternative to Bobby Firmino, he really showed what he was kind of capable of doing and some of his extra skill sets that I perhaps didn't think that he that he naturally had. I think the problem he's found this season is the fact that, obviously, as you've just mentioned, Jota and Nunes through the middle have, for all of you know Nunes's faults, they, they've been a handful for defences every single time they went on the pitch. You know, the only times we've lost this season, Nunes hasn't started. Four games, it might have been all season, and Nunes hasn't started all four of them. And they're the only games that we've lost this season. So that just goes to show you the importance that, maybe not even necessarily, you know, that clinical edge, but in terms of defences, defences are on high alert whenever Nunes is on the pitch. Likewise, Jota, everybody knows statistically that Jota is that killer. So you've got to be on your game. I, I just don't think they have the same level of fear for Cody Gakpo because he's more elusive and he don't really know what he does and he kind of not necessarily goes missing but he drifts in and out of games for me and I think just that midfield I think him and Gravenberch you can have one you can have one that can kind of flick it in and out but you can't have two not when you go into the Emirates not when you need to get a result you can't have two players that aren't going to be fully on it and as I say I don't want to scapegoat any individual players for yesterday's results because I think across the board he was all piss poor but I just think the the amount of games that we'd played versus the amount of games that Arsenal had played in terms of minutes in the legs in in the last week was significantly in Arsenal's favour than Liverpool's and I think we had more options I think Kwanzaa would have been an option to throw in there. I think we could have had Joe Gomez at right back and brought Trent into midfield, even if we only did that for an hour, upwards of an hour. I think we could have put started Robbo. He came on back end of um, the Chelsea game. So at least start him for X amount of minutes. And if you've got to do some moving around in the second half, do it. I thought, you know, I thought, to be honest, I genuinely thought after the way the first half went, the, the substitutes for Liverpool were going to be the difference in yesterday's game. But when you throw in a clangor like that, and it's your, your elder statesman, it's your captain, it's your, it's your world-class goalkeeper. It does 
it does ring the alarm bells to to the rest of the side to say, ooh, do we have what it takes to really drag us out of it? And to be honest, mate, I'll be I'll be frank. Liverpool players haven't had to dig dig and go to the well that many times this season. We haven't really put ourselves up against it to the point where you think you've really got to go to the well and, and pour it all out. And maybe they just felt like, do you know what? It's an off day. It's a bad day at the office. But if we go all guns blazing now to try and get a result back, what does that take out of our legs in two to three to four weeks' time? We still need to be in it at that point as well. So I think they may have weighed it up and just ruled it down to this is a very good Arsenal side, a side that has played us off the park twice in the space of a month now. All right, we, we won the FA Cup and we got through that tie, but there's still 15 more games left to win in the Premier League and you're not going to win the league in February. So there is still plenty of time. And I think as well, for, for from what I've said to you from the start of the season, Dan, if Arsenal or Liverpool stand a chance of dethroning City this season, it's because we're going to do better against City and drag them into drag them down to our level. And I think sometimes the players will look at it in that set of circumstances and say, well, if Arsenal feel like they're still in it, it means that they're still going to give it everything when it comes around to playing City again um, at their place. Whereas if we put them out of it by eight points, do Arsenal just start looking over the shoulder and want to secure top four and start looking at other opposition? And I don't think that would ever be the mentality, but you could understand why at least allowing, not allowing Arsenal because you've deserved it, but at least at least still seeing Arsenal as a as a as a prominent threat to the title gives us a little bit more of a of a chance rather than it just being a two horse race where everybody knows the outcome. Mm, interesting, man. Big up Lee Donner, Wade, and uh, literally Roy Keane is on the top right hand side here. Big up Dan. Uh, sorry, mate. Go on. But to ask, so you, you, you're saying, you know, obviously it was the fact you played more games in in less days, which is which is you know. Isn't that expected? Isn't that expected being a quad father and being someone who thinks that they're going to win everything they're in this season? Is that not? Can you not use that as an excuse? Can you go on say that again? I got distracted. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so did your lads for ninety minutes last week. But, uh, but anyway, no, no. What I'm saying is, <laughs> for, for you to say <clears throat> that you, you've played more games in less days, and then to come out and give me the quad father talk yeah. isn't this expected if you think you're going to win everything can you not use that as an excuse well, what it's not it's not the fact that i'm using it as an excuse it's just a justification for the fact arsenal that arsenal were in a better arsenal had more more, more time to, than, than us so no it's not about having having more times so it just we just had more minutes in our legs in the last week than arsenal did that's a fact i can't dispute that I we think... have to over we have to try our challenge is trying to overcome yeah. it but the, the reality is that we we've got credit in the bank we sat yesterday at the top of the league irrespective of the results so don't get me wrong i would have loved for those mistakes individual errors to have happened in the you know burnley game on the weekend you could be three four nil up and then van dyke and allison have a, have, a, have a disaster class and you think you can laugh it off the fact that it happened against the title challenge inside that's going for it with you hurts more absolutely but does that, does that, does in those moments what happened yesterday, does that derail Liverpool's season? Does it stop Liverpool from still being able to secure multiple trophies? No, it absolutely doesn't. If anything, it could be the bloody nose that we need to, to, to shock us back into life to say nothing's a given. And if nothing's a given, it means we can't make any more individual mistakes as a side. We have to. The one saving grace from a, from a Liverpool's perspective is we've got, Num numerous players all ready to come back back into the fold which strengthened the squad but which in turn will strengthen the start on 11 that we can put out we can week out provided they all stay fit so i'm not necessarily worried just because of one off day as i said from at the top that's our second loss all season boys so whatever you think irrespective of me talking about quad father like Liverpool to have only lost two games all season and to still be in this position right now just goes to show you the strength and depth that we've had up until this point. It's about now transforming that and seeing, right? I said to you weeks ago, Dan, get out of January and look at that running and you can see a pathway to a, to a, to a Premier League title. It's up to those lads to say, do they want it? Do they really want to put, put in for it this season? And I didn't, I didn't believe that it was a necessity. But now the fact that Klopp's going, 
it does feel like a necessity. They owe him that at least. Whether we go on to win it or not is by the by. The reality is they owe him to put it in now from, from, from obviously yesterday's performance onwards to go the distance. And yesterday could be the bloody nose and that shock to the system. Because we might have thought at some point the players might have got a bit complacent. Oh, we beat them the other day with a with a lesser team. We'll be able to do it again. No, because that was the Liverpool of last season. See, I, I don't think it was. last season was what got us into the trouble that we was in for for months. Why I was so humble? I don't think we're looking at the right thing here. This doesn't mean anything for Liverpool, in my opinion. This is just a game they've lost finally. I don't think I don't see it as two games that you lost. I see it as one because the one that you did lose against Spurs was a joke, if I'm honest with you. I know it goes down as a loss, but that was crazy, right? So this is the first proper loss that you can go, do you know what? We'll hold that. Because you ain't taking the loss against Tottenham, right? I think this is we can't need to concentrate on what this means for Arsenal. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say it means that we're gonna win a title because I never thought we'd win a title anyway. But I want to ask the panel, does this actually change your position on where Arsenal were at in terms of are we in a top four race or are we back in a title race now? I'll ask the other three this. Hmm. Does <laughs> Arsenal beating 10 man Liverpool at home change my <laughs> They're already winning when they're going down to 10 men, Lawless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not. 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 He's Sometimes, Lawless, you remind me why I love you so much. Go on, like, you speak your shit, Lawless. You speak your shit. What a liar, what a liar Errol is. What a liar. Errol loving Lawless. What a liar that is. This <laughs> <laughs> the day and night. Let me see. I don't think... Let him land. <laughs> yeah, let me land. Let me land. <laughs> Personally, great result, but Arsenal beating 10 man Liverpool doesn't change things for me. When the Champions League comes up hot and heavy, the tough teams, yeah, Wednesday, Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday, whatever, when that comes up and you're going to have to play your first team in that game, your first team on the other game, you've got Jesus injury prone. Partey, you might as well forget about that guy, you know, and then you've got other injury prone players like Tommy Asu and them. I, I honestly, once that kicks on, like, like, Errol said they've played a lot of games in a short span of time. Arsenal have gone for a period now, not worrying about that, obviously, topping the group. So I think when it comes up... Then. Give me a date when we're out of the title. Uh, I'm going to say, what is it? It's the 5th of February. I'm going to say you'll be proper out of it, I'd say, by the end of end of March, like confidently, like where we, where Arsenal fans can at least say we're out of it. We'll all say, like all the sensible, like neutrals will say you're out of it, like by the end of Feb or something. You're not saying the 11th, you know. but they play you. That could be it. Like, because what would that mean? Like, if they don't beat us, what would this result mean? If they can't beat 10 man Liverpool, nothing. it know? means nothing if we lose to West Ham, like last When's season. That? When's that? Next, well, that? next week, mate. Next week, we got West Ham on the 11th of Feb. So that'll be fun. We got to go there and win because obviously, like, we got to shut them up. They're rubbish at the moment as well. We'll talk on them next. But uh, listen, I, I kind of half agree with what Lawless is saying that it does mean nothing if we lose to West Ham and we lose to Liverpool. I kind of feel like we are not going to win the title, but I do think it's harsh that he seems to think we're in like this race with Villa and Spurs and United and West Ham. Whereas personally, I do think that we are looking up with Liverpool and City. I don't think we're going to win the title, but I do think we will be in a title race until you know around what? about March time, you know, like April time. Do you so. know what this will do for you more than anything else, Dan? In the on, in the shorter to medium term, it's going to give you that dreaded context that you're going to have to wrestle with come the end of the season. That's what it's going to do. That when you deep it, that's what, what do you mean? What? So you think we? What about type being in a title race? You mean? No, just that the whole concept of context of where is Arteta going to take us? Is he the man to take us? Oh, right. And he, he, that type of result, and you just chipping away at the heels of City, forget Liverpool, chipping away at the heels of City is going to have you come the end of the season pondering, is he still the right man? Do we still trust this process? Can we go a step further next year? It won't and have that, pots pondering. It definitely won't have pots pondering. He'll, he'll, we know that. No, it will, it will. It will. Trust me. Or the fan base, whatever. The, why the Arsenal fan base? Pots, you know, the frigging north sides and the gunners of this world and all them lot. They might already be on a particular side of the fence. 
but the majority will be sat pondering at the end of the season being like hmm is it enough this is that's all it's going to add it's just going to add that layer of context for you lads and i think that will again i'm glad that i'm not the arsenal fan to have to wrestle with that because i still don't think there's a unified stance within the arsenal fan base but games like yesterday give you glimpses for you to think oh come on we're back in it we can do it and then as you as, as lawless may have picked up or pointed out then a loss to West Ham and it's back to square one almost. It's it's we're, we're we're not good enough to go for a title. So the longer you are in that flickering in between, what Arsenal really need now to, to nail them on is to go on a 10 game unbeaten run and still be in the conversation come the end of March. You know, I think at that point it's nailed on that he stays again for another season. But if you still keep if you get a result against those, don't get a result against uh, West Ham, but then get a result against City, but then you know, and then beat Man U, but don't get a result against Spurs, all of that just adds to that cauldron of context that you're gonna have to wrestle with at the end of the season. So one way or another, it's it's gonna be an interesting watch. Well, listen, the timing could not be much better. LB, big up, my bro. Obviously, Manchester City went one nil down and everyone got excited. And then um well, you turned it on. Well, Phil Foden turned it on. I didn't see the game. I just heard that Man City totally battered them. And it could have been about 8-1. Um, but Foden got a hat-trick, I think, if I'm mm-hmm. correct. And um, yesterday was probably... I don't know. You tell me. Was it the perfect result for Man City yesterday? I don't know. What's, Liverpool, what's, Arsenal. what's for me? I, I mean, I did a poll in the chat yesterday when I was doing a watch on. I did a poll in the chat before the game. I said, City fans, vote on what you want. Is your preference? Do you want a draw or, or Arsenal win? And um, most people, I think it was like 55, 56% of people wanted a draw. And then the rest wanted, a, wanted an Arsenal win. I wanted an Arsenal win. Because it's the only way that we can that properly go top without the goal difference. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that, listen, tonight was... not a serious yeah. challenge, are they? They're not a serious threat, you know, but Liverpool well, are. Well, That's it's, why. It's, don't listen to the don't listen to him, LB. Say you speak your own mind. Don't listen to this. I'm guy. just saying that's what I'm hearing. Absolutely I'm trolling hearing. people. Just just let before you interrupt LB, he wasn't finished talking. Just just wait. For, <laughs> let, let him, I'm just I'm just helping him land. I'm helping him. I've got I've got the little, you know, when they hold that, <laughs> you know, like, right? Land, land LB. <laughs> it's, the, it's the David Silver of the race for Europe show. That's what he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now now listen. I, I wanted a draw. Just I wanted a Arsenal win mainly because if we win our two games in hand, we go top of the table guaranteed. Whereas if it was a draw, it would depend on goal difference. So it wasn't in our hands. You know what I mean? Well, it was in our hands in terms of goal difference. But you know what? You know what can happen. But yeah, listen. Tonight we got the job done. I called it at one at one nil down. I said Kate uh, said Phil Foden's up for this. Give give Phil Foden the ball, and um, he delivered. Man, he delivered the goods. That guy is special in midfield. For the last few years, he's had to deal with playing on the wing. I've had to deal with these fans going. Oh, how come he plays on the wing? He can't be that good if he plays on the wing. Despite us having David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne and Ilkay Gundogan in the midfield. That's probably why it was, lads. Yeah, that's why he's playing on the wing. Now Pep is finally giving him the keys to the midfield role. My God, he's a special player. And I tell you what, that bum Southgate, yeah, needs to find a way of making that England team around Phil Foden and Jude Bellingham because they're two of the best players I've ever seen play, yeah, for this England team, especially in the last decade. And we they're special talents, but I watched you at Real Madrid last night. At Bellingham was a joker. Guy reminds me of Zidane, like proper, proper <laughs> player. He's gonna be a player. Nowhere yeah, near but... peak yet. Nowhere near peak yet. He's like 21, 22, mate, as well. He's younger than that, mate, isn't he? Just 20. Is he? He's a he's 20, he's 20, yeah. mate. That those two, right? Bellingham and Foden, along with Harry Kane with the goals, can win it, can win us the tournament. That those three right. can win us the tournament. And Phillips, yeah, of course, and Phillips of West Ham. You got, you got, you got to find a way of getting him in there. You got to of find course. a way of getting him in there. He, that, LB, you said it all. Like the guy Foden was outstanding. Oh, to be fair, man, you talk about Foden, Foden, Bellingham, Rice. Obviously, Madison's still there as well. People don't want to sleep on Bukayo Saka, Harry Kane. This is mad. If Southgate don't win this, Jesus, come on. Let's, that's another another question. LB, um, just quickly, um. Your thoughts just in like 30 seconds about what you thought of the game for Arsenal and what it means for you in terms of title, yeah. Arsenal-Liverpool. You're obviously disappointed with Liverpool. I heard you earlier a little bit on uh, Saeed's channel talking about um, how you thought Liverpool were poor. Um, did you, did, were you impressed by Arsenal or was it just that Liverpool were crap and it was easy for Arsenal? I was impressed with Arsenal in the way that you handled the occasion. Um, because I thought this would be a game that maybe you'd see your asses, you'd start you know, losing your heads and the emotion would get to you and that. 
Um, and it was the opposite. You know, Liverpool really, really struggled in the game. Really uncharacteristically like Liverpool's uh, team. They were shocking from back to front. Defence was awful. Midfield was awful. I felt sorry for McAllister. Yeah, and people slagging him off. I felt he was just left in there alone to rot because Gravenberg and Curtis Jones just ghosted the game and just let him in there. So I thought that was a bit, a bit unfortunate for him that he's got a lot of stick. Um, Luis Diaz, he's a twist merchant. Oh, he does his twist left and right. No end product. Jota ghosted and Gakpo. I don't think Gakpo's good enough for Liverpool. I've said it since he signed him. Don't think he's good enough. I don't even think he's a good enough squad player, in my opinion, Gakpo. I really, I really don't. I think that's just the standards that yeah, I just Liverpool. mentioned that funny enough. I literally brought that up before you come yeah. on. Yeah. I think Liverpool for me should have should have changed the tactics. I think they should have sat deep, started with Nunes and just played sort of counter-attacking football and just absorbed pressure and got them on the break and just played the game. But listen, fair dues to Arsenal. You know what I mean? That was a big win for them. The way they handled it was impressive. Um since City's hands now for me. And, you know, we've won five in a row now in the Premier League, nine in all competitions. We've got Everton on Saturday. We could go top of the league temporarily if we win that. Things are looking good for my team, man. But it's good title race, you know what I mean? We're all in it. Everyone's still in it. And even even Aston Villa have a hope. They're only five points behind, probably not. But, you know, we're good for a good race. Do you agree with Lawless that um, uh, it's Liverpool and City still and Arsenal were fighting with Villa for fourth? I suppose. <laughs> uh... Mm, nah, I think Arsenal's still in it. I think I think that's I think that's a bit harsh, Lost. You heard it. That's your friend talking. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> let's move, man. Let's move to. Uh, oh, I'm gonna do you. I'm gonna talk you. You free. I'm gonna do, talk, bring you free into it together, man. Because uh, you've all had a bit of a strange weekend. Well, Dan hasn't. Um, Dan had a lovely weekend, mate. I've got to say. And do you know what, Dan? Big up to yourself, man. Because you ain't been. You ain't had many, have you, bruv, This week. This oh, I've been looking forward to this show ever since fucking final whistle last yesterday. Jesus Christ. Go on, mate. Have the mic, bruv. Go on. Just unbelievable. Well, yeah, it's great, but then hit with the awful news that Martinez is out for, for a minute, between six and eight weeks. Which I don't know if if, you, if you've watched since he's been back. It, the, the difference in in the defence at United has been incredible. You know, he brings the ball out from the back. He's controlled his voice. So whereas yesterday I was I was on cloud nine, um, not because we beat West Ham three 0 It's it's the mighty West Ham, but more so for glimpses of the future. Harlan at uh, Harland, um, Hoyland. Sorry, Harland. Yeah. You wish Hoyland, you wish Hoyland. Yeah, I wish Hoyland. No, you know, four and four in the Prem. It was a it was a phenomenal finish yesterday. You know, this kid has, has kept going and going and going. He's into double figures in all competitions this season now, which I think is really good. I think we're starting to see something from him. And a, a major positive for me is we seem to be not using Anthony as much now. It's almost like Ten Hards woke up, smelled the coffee. And realised you could play my now on the right, and she'd do a better job than than, than Anthony. She's been dead for eleven years. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Garnacho is Garnacho again, though. Garnacho, Maynu, and Hoyland. That picture of them all sat on the on the board there, all young, you know, twenty one and, and under. It's it's frightening how good these players could be. Maynu, I love that kid so much, and and the maturity he displays for an eighteen year old lad. You know, we talk about Bradley for Liverpool. Coming for those two games has looked really, really good. LB's been blessed with players coming through at City like Rico Lewis, like like Foden. These players, if you nurture them right, can can end up being something special. That's the key, though. You've got to nurture them right. Exactly. Got I agree. To, I agree, Errol. Because if they if they stay around that rough for too long, yeah, you know I completely what agree. What I completely agree. I think yesterday it was more a case of how poor West Ham were. I think Lawless will agree with that. I, I, I think West Ham were poor yesterday. I looked at the stats, you know, shots twenty one, but lawless half them were shots, mate. They were they were horrendous, weren't they? They were absolutely horrendous. Emerson and Bowen, they that was poor, man. Yeah, well, horrendous. Listen, if listen, when we played Arsenal and they had all them shots, you know, that was a big deal. Look how many shots we had. You know what I mean? So I agree with you. But it's just funny now the Arsenal fans saying we we were shit. But we had shit loads of shots. I thought that was what determined what a good side was. So yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But Lawless, I, agree. I, I tell you what as well. I mean, brilliant. Zuma, Zuma yesterday completely <laughs> clattering uh, Ariola. That was I was I was laughing my head off at that. What was the guy doing? I, I just honestly, it looked it looked to me like Moyes has done well for you this season, but 
But I mean, you've got to be worried about the stat of, of 2024. Have you? I don't think you've won. Have you? Have you won in 2024 yet? And that's not me bantering. That's no. that's got to be a worrying stat. You were like five, six, maybe seven points ahead of United. You know, and we had yeah. that chat, and we we quite rightly had that chat that United had done. You know, it's just another fucking day. United lose again, lose again. But United getting these players back. Okay, I'm still not Ten Hag in, but United getting these players back. And having more first team players to utilize, playing Dallow at right back, Luke Shaw getting minutes again, playing at left back. Rashford, Rashford, I, I, you know my thoughts on Rashford, Trashford, I call him, but him playing with Luke Shaw, there's that fluidity on the left again. There's so many positives. Now, what did we really do yesterday, though, Dan? I didn't really, he was the one Man United player that I didn't really notice yesterday, to be honest. No, no, with I, you. I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but I think when you. The thing for me is the link up between him and Shaw. We don't, we haven't been able to see that with United this season on the wings because we've been disjointed. We've got to play players. You know, it's been so nice that we've been able to put Johnny Evans back in the museum at Old Trafford and, and we'll just break him out when we need to. Do you know what I mean? We've, we, he's got bread and milk underneath the, the display for him. He, he's fine. Even, even the simple things yesterday worked, you know, like being more expansive with the ball. It was still counter attacking. I know that. But I just felt yesterday with Casemiro and Maynou, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm not sitting here and saying United are going to win, they're going to qualify for Champions League. I said in my TikTok after the game, I don't think we will. I still don't think it. We've got Villa away on Sunday. We have to get go there and take something from Villa Park. Simple as that. Because we can have these two wins. You know, we can have these wins against Wolves, which we scraped. We all know that. We can have the win against West Ham. But we've done this before this season where we've got a couple of wins and then it's just fallen off again. This now has to be about Manchester United and consistency. But for me yesterday, I, honestly, as a Manchester United fan and knowing what, what our record is with the youth that we've had come through and seeing those three lads play together, it was it reminded me a bit of the old times yesterday. It was it was so so good. So good. When does um when does Bowen and uh Kudus come back for West Ham? Because when they'd come back, West Ham will start winning again. When do them two come back for West Ham? Does anyone know? Whoa, whoa, whoa! You've, you've missed a key a key player in that. Oh, no, the, the, uh, they're out at the moment, aren't they? Kudus and Bowen. No, you, you, they're out. You, I, it, they're it, out. It That's why Paquetta. West Ham aren't winning because they're out. What's, when are they back? Well, no, it was Paqueta. That was the three ingredients: Bowen, Kudus, and Paqueta. Oh. You added, you added an ingredient. ingredient so sorry, Kudus ingredient. and Bowen have been playing them, have they? Oh, okay, thanks for clearing that one up. Well, yeah, Kudus won us a penalty to get us a point against Bournemouth. So, yeah. And, you oh, know, yeah. Bowen back, Bowen was back cool. and you still can't win. I, I, just, well, I thought that was the best front three in the league. I thought it was better than well, Arsenal. Paquette is not back, though, is he? One of the front three is not back. Oh, that's it. Then. Only three, the three of them have to be there. Otherwise, it just goes to pot. They yeah, Moyes got rid of all our fucking winners. Then. They must be class then. <laughs> we need one better, otherwise we can't score. They must be quality. No, how did Ings thing. not get on the pitch yesterday? How did how did I'm Ings only joking. I like Bowen and Kudus, but you get my point. Needed a goal yesterday, no, and why was Ings on the pitch? No, I don't. <laughs> Moyes, <laughs> I don't listen. I, I don't know what Moyes is doing lately. I mean, the, the oh, the, here we go. I was, I was, I had a timer. Whoa, I had a timer. Whoa, whoa. I had a timer. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> it's not going with you. I'm just, I'm calling him out. I'm just criticizing him. The Bournemouth lineup was a disgrace, absolute disgrace, putting Ward Prowse on the wing. And then we get to the Arsenal game, and you think, okay, like he's going to, you know, maybe just put, at least get, you know, play corner, play a left winger on the left. He's tried to, ex he's, he's, it's like he's still in experiment mode. Um, but it just shows we struggle against teams that don't want a lot of the ball. Like if you give us the ball, we don't know how to break teams down because we're so slow. I was sitting there. It's on YouTube. Me, I'm commentating. And he pa passes back to Zuma, who passes to Aguerd, who passes back to Ariola, passes to Zuma, to Johnson, back to Zuma. To, uh, that's what it is. It's so infuriating. I can't st stand it. It's painful to watch. I'm choking up on my own words here because Does that um, mean it's time for a new manager then lawless listen i'm not going to change my position until the end of the season i've said unless we're going to be in a serious relegation battle there's no point on 
sacking him now. Hey, Errol, you better get Xabi Alonso quick, mate, because you know otherwise West Ham they'll snoop they'll swoop in. Mate. West Ham are coming, coming for my man. But I tell you what, though, like we had some chances there. We had some chances. Obviously, we should have had a penalty, right? I will say that clearly. You know, no. yeah. Come on, come no. on, no. Carl, What's this about? What is this no. about? Non-consensual choking from Casemiro. <laughs> That's not allowed. That's not legal in the box. What's going on there? <laughs> and then at Emerson... If I, I'd be more worried about Bowen. Bowen had 27 years time to do something. And what happened? Bowen. Gallo jogged back. Didn't, didn't sprint. Nice little jog back. Got the ball. Shot. Should have just shot. The fucking acne Andy Carroll did it. He showed him how to do it. You just fucking stick your foot through it. You don't sit there and touch, 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 to touch, touch. That's what we do. Take too many touches. Acne Andy it's just Carroll. so <laughs> frustrating uh, to see that and then to let that fucking bowl cut, air cut, do the Kuda celebration. What is this new trend? What is this new embarrassing, cringeworthy trend of, oh, I'll score and I'll do your celebration against you? Like... Oh, it's getting embarrassing for these players now. So I was going to post it, mate, in the group when and I thought it's two oh, nil. I watched this against you. Wolves. I know what's happening, so I left it till three, and then I was like, "There we go." Oh, it's embarrassing, mate. It's embarrassing. Listen, I know I've got nowhere, but it's better their cut than what that mug's got. Honestly, like his mum just stuck a bowl around it, and he's he's one of them. He's going to be one of them. He's your next Bruno. He's your next punchable face player. Can't stand him, but. We didn't deserve anything from the game, despite the chances, despite the shots, despite the the choking. We didn't deserve anything from the game. And we, we, we had the held on. We was unbeaten. We had the Arsenal unbeaten thing, you know, where you have loads of draws and you can say you're unbeaten. We was unbeaten in the league. Funny enough, actually, do you know who our last team that we beat was? Does anyone remember Us. who the last team we beat Us. was? Arsenal. That was Arsenal. No. No, it was United, wasn't it? In the league? Hold up. It's Arsenal. Anyone? No, no one knows. Okay. Arsenal. To be frank. There you go. Well done. You win the prize. So we're so shit, but you were the last team we beat. So listen, I'll I said Arsenal that. about half hour ago, and you didn't reply. He went, no, 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 because no, I thought he was saying Man United. My sound bar changes oh. functions, and I have to. I couldn't hear it. Yeah, it was Arsenal. Ooh, sound bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need it because the sound on this TV is shit. Um, <laughs> but look, we got Paquetta back for the Arsenal game. We ha we have to do that now. Are you worried now? Are you worried you might the, Derby, the, trilogy, the trilogy, man? Of course, the Declan Derby trilogy. <laughs> Arsenal, look, they're going to try and get a consolation win against us. Um, good luck to them. But we we've put ourselves in a situation where we have to win that game. You don't win against Sheffield United and Bournemouth. I said this, then you have to win at Old Trafford. I don't care it's Old Trafford. You have to win, right? You, you lose at Old Trafford. You have to beat Arsenal at home. I don't care if it's Arsenal. I don't care they're in this pseudo title race. You have to win that game. Are you, are you, worried, are you worried that you might slip down? Yeah, of course no. there's, a, there's, there's a worry. But listen, Moyes needs to find a way and... You know, the, the transfer window was a joke. I, listen, people are, as well on Phillips, they're doing too much on Phillips. It's, it's an easy agenda. Um, both of those situations weren't his fault. Look at the passes. Look at the passes into him. Good, it was a good, uh, good debut. What he's, saying is he's used to playing with better, better players then. Is what you're saying. Well, he's not used to playing with him because he never fucking played. And that's why we got to give him time. True. Get up to speed. Give him time to. He has had eighteen months effectively with no football. Yeah, I think he's a great. Well. I think he's a great player still. I still, I still rate him, but um, I just think your midfield. He's actually a good player because I, I, everybody did the same as me. I think it was Tobes actually. So where's he going to play? Where's he going to play? Or who's going to miss out? But you'll just, you'll just drop Suchek out and play. But he won't. Calvin I Phillips. would. I would. No, there but he will so... when Paquetta comes back, though. He will when Paquetta comes back, surely. I don't know, because we, we saw against Bournemouth that he would rather play Ward-Prowse on the wing than drop Suchek. Like, that's <laughs> where right. we're at. That's that's how mad it is. He, 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 Suchek did nothing that game. Absolutely nothing. And, um, you know, he got a yellow card, and that's probably the only reason why he came off. He won't drop him. 
So, listen, I don't know what he's going to do. I feel sorry for, for Phillips because I feel like he's been done dirty in both moments. But he's, he can pass the ball. He's quality. He's a quality player. You can see it. He just needs time. Um, <laughs> Kai, Hughes, yeah. Kai Hughes has got a great comment there, Lawless. You're going over about Garnacho's haircuts, but you've got that thing on Phillips' head. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Listen. Listen. I'd rather have that hairstyle all day over whatever that is on Garnacho's head. Honestly. Um, yeah, I feel for the geezer. So, but we should, we didn't, people are writing what they're saying. We didn't necessarily need, that's not a position we necessarily needed. And we've gone and bought, brought in Phillips and not a striker. Obviously, we've got Antonio to come back, but we sold all our left wingers. Uh, I don't know why we loaned out, mate. Right. Your, your end of your window was a shambles, mate. That it started so bro. well. I thought, all right, cool. Early getting in Phillips. Here we go. We got Osman coming in. You know, Jota, what's going on? And then Ben Rama, what the hell, man? That was embarrassing. Yeah, yeah Ben, we didn't submit the paperwork. And P4 Nels. And P4 Nels. Four Nels went, though, right? P4 Nels, yeah. Four Nels went, no. For Nels was in a similar situation, but he just about got over the line. And then Ben Rama didn't go, but then FIFA gave them a special. Um, you know, situation, special circumstances, and it will so save the both So they're both yeah. gone now. Right, okay. Leon crazy, probably won't be doing business. Crazy thing to do, man. Anytime. Crazy thing to do. The, the, the debt faint there now, is it? Paquette is already out. That was, it's mad. That's crazy for me. But listen, we'll see. We'll see. West Ham are still in the mix. Um, before before we football, wrap man. up on Newcastle, let's uh, smash the likes, people. Let's get the likes up. Let's subscribe. Let's make sure you go follow all these, man. Um, before we wrap up, Pete, what a game. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe when I saw it. I thought, that is a mad result. And I watched match of the day. I was just sitting there with a with a uh, drink thinking, this is actually insane. Now, what I will say, right, and I'm sure the panel will agree with this. And I'm sure you'll agree with it, Pete, as well. Luton are the only team that you can respect massively out of the three that will come up. Vincent Company is just a, a fraud, clearly. He isn't good enough manager. You can see that. He's terrible. And then you've got Sheffield United, who are actually embarrassing. <laughs> actually embarrassingly bad. Burnley and Sheffield United are done. They're, they're going down, man. But Luton are the only ones people are looking at and going, do you know what? And people had Burnley and company. Oh, he's Pep's boy. He's going to be brilliant. No, nah, they're done. They're finished. Sheffield United, pff, sorry, Chris Wilder ain't going to save you. And, mate, Luton, just fair play, man. Rob Edwards. You are embarrassing, Potts, man. You're embarrassed. When it comes to Newcastle, what man, is, why, where is why, it? Why, where's the smoke? Where's the smoke? Like, you're, you're hyping what are you talking up about? Luton. Big just, Newcastle. Big up Luton. What are you talking about? Big Newcastle, right, have drawn to Luton, a relegation side. Pots, after pots. not picking up many points. Um, and that's what your that's what your <coughs> intro is. That's what you lead with. You don't lead with come Lawless, on. Don't, don't worry, leave the smoke to me. It's okay. Ah, uh, see, see. Yeah. <laughs> Potts isn't a deluded Newcastle fan like like uh Pete isn't a deluded Newcastle fan like Potts. That's what I like. Pete, Pete's not the deluded. Pots I'm not no new Newcastle fan up here, man. No new Newcastle. Yeah. Were were, uh, I'd be shocked by that, but I've got a big up Luton, man. Luton, well, that fair play to it, man. Fully deserved the point. Um, and honestly, they, they, they were looking. Right, Lord, let's they, see. They fully deserved they, the they, point. They were. They, they were. They were looking not to win. Um, honestly, like that was a fucking dreadful performance from us. It was really, really bad. Um, and. Look, there's other things that have happened in that game. Like we, we had that game sewed up, like one nil up, cruising, should have been two. They get the equaliser, really poor defending. And then we get two one up, and at that point we're comfortable. We're comfortable, and then we just keep giving shocking, shocking goals away. It's been our like we were equal Man City last season, best defense in the league. We are fucking shite at the moment. Really, really not organized at the back at all. Leaking goals. I expected us to leak more goals with the Brav Green goal because he's not for me on the level of Nick Pope, but we're shifting more goals than I expected. And it is a massive worry. Um we've been good lately, Pete. Hadn't he had some really good games recently? He has, but he still conceded a lot of goals. He had a he had a monstrous game against Liverpool and still conceded four. Like it, it, this, that's the situation that we're in. Like he's having good games and he's making great saves, but he's but we're still shipping goals and that's a big problem. But it's not just him; the defense are making mistakes. Um, look, uh, someone just put in there Ross Barkley. He, he's gone prime Everton um, with his performances recently because he's he is looking a proper yeah, proper man, player. He's been class, man. He was the best midfielder on in the pit on the pitch 
in, from both teams. Like he literally ran that midfield. He was excellent. Um, and Og Benny on that right hand side, like. This is what I think pissed off all Newcastle United fans on Saturday. It's Ogbeni on that right-hand side up against Dan Byrne. You could see after 15 minutes, Dan Byrne was getting rinsed left, right and centre. He was having an absolute mare, right? And I'm I'm not, most Newcastle, we're not going to blame Dan Byrne for that. He knew he was going to get rinsed. He's not he's not quick enough to keep up with Ogbeni. Ogbeni's the fastest player recorded in the Premier League this season. And you're putting him up against Dan Byrne. The problem is, is that he should have been pulled. He should have either been pulled or do what we did against Villa and put Tina Livermento on, go five at the back, make it tight, stop their main player from playing, and then try and pick him off the other way. Because we were still creating a shed load of chances. But Eddie Howe made the decision way too late. We, he, he gave away the penalty and, you know, people can argue whether it's a penalty or not. There was contact with the foot on the line. The ref gives it. You can't really argue it. Um, but at that point, the one thing I expect to happen is is to then drag him off and say, look, you know what? Y your game's done. He kept him on for another five minutes. He's then way out of position and we go and concede a fourth. And then he pulls him off. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, it's, it's too late by then. Luckily for us, we had Callum Wilson and Harvey Barnes that comes on and they both changed the game for us. And we get two quick goals back in. We're back at 4-4, but we gave ourselves too much of a mountain to climb at that point. Great to see Harvey Barnes back. He's barely kicked a ball from us for us this season. Smashed in a really, really good goal. Um, and yeah, salvaged, ended up salvaging a point. But... Yeah, um, honestly, really, really frustrated um, with, with that performance. Um, look, you, you, you would have got the complete opposite of me on Tuesday um, when we beat Villa. And what, the one thing, I, the one positive that I'm taking from all of this over the course of the weekend is this: is that if you'd have asked me from Villa away and Luton at home, would you take four points? I'd have said yes. They just didn't come the way round that I expected them to. I expected I would have snapped your hand off for a point at Villa Park and I would have took the win at, um, at Luton. We got it the other way round. It's not the worst thing in the world, but really we should have took six points and I'm pissed off that we didn't. But it's not the worst thing in the world. We've got Forest away on Saturday, Bournemouth at home the next weekend. We've got to win those games. But typical Newcastle, Physio FC, we get two players back in Wilson and Barnes and then we go and lose Isaac for two games and we've got um, Anthony Gordon on crutches. It's just our season. This, this is this is just an absolute mad season. Uh, I, I just are I you in a are you in a top are you in a conference league battle here with West Ham now for one of these two to finish seventh? Well, well, we're five points behind Man United and we're three points behind West Ham. Like if you look at the league, the league's incredibly tight. You've got Wolves. Um, little Dan's in the chat. Um, we've got Wolves that are a point behind they us. Chelsea that are not too far behind them. Like, it's really condensed. Like, we won on Tuesday against Villa and we went to seventh. Like, with, with, the, with the run that we've been on, just one one win took us to seventh. Like, like you can't you can't call it. Man United are there. Right at, now, yeah. Man United right. are there at the moment. Aston, uh, sorry, um, West Ham are in and around it at the moment. But within a couple of games, it could all change. Like, Brighton weren't, weren't even being talked about. They got they absolutely smashed Palace, and now they're there. So if we, like, we could go and win on Saturday night against uh, Forest, and then we're back up there again. We're, we, so it, it, it's going to change. It's going to change. You can't, I, I'm not going to pinpoint it right now, because like it's literally going to chop and change every week. So many um, teams are going to be up, down, up, down. Um for me, the minimum I, I expect from Newcastle United this season is seventh Europa Conference. I said it to you boys, I'll say it again. That's the minimum I expect. Um, whether we get that or not, who knows? Depends on how many players we can keep fit. Yeah, man. Billy, big up, man. It's, it's 11 o'clock here. It's about 8 a.m. where you are, isn't it? Yeah, 9 a.m. now. I woke up a little bit late. <laughs> Mate, having fun, bro? Yeah, a lot of fun, thanks. Um, Good man. Just got to, just got here. Surfers Paradise now. Yesterday, chill day. Yesterday, just get, get rested in that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm tired, man. 
<laughs> yeah, you look it, man. You look it. Listen, before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance. Aston Villa absolutely bashed, well, bashed apart them, um, if I'm honest with you, bruv. And uh, literally, it was easy for you. Um, where are you at with Villa right now? Because Champions League is obviously going to be very disappointing uh, if you don't get it, I think, this season for where you've been. Um, are you confident with everyone around you that you, you're still going to be in the race for that? You look at what Newcastle and Manchester, uh, sorry, Newcastle and uh, West Ham have done this weekend in terms of keeping them a distance from you. And then obviously Manchester United still look like they're probably going to be looking for top six as opposed to top four. Um, where are you at, bruv? Yeah, it's, I still definitely think that we can get Champions League, obviously. Huge game next weekend against Man United. You know, if we win that, we're then 11 points clear of them. And hopefully that's then the the top five kind of solidified. And, and maybe we do get Champions League, whether it's through fourth or through fifth. Um, but yeah, that game's, that game's obviously huge. And I do think that we can obviously get there. Um, but the injury of Ezra Konzal that's just come out, looking like he could be out for two months. It's going to be a huge, huge wow. loss. So that'd be Conza. Torres has been flirting with coming back. You know, his injury was only supposed to keep him out for a couple of months around Christmas, a uh, couple of weeks, sorry, around Christmas time. All of a sudden we're in February and he's still not back. Um, so God knows what's what's going on with that one. But yeah, to have those two out is is a huge, huge loss. And having to play cash at the minute isn't a good thing. He's been really, really poor whenever he's come on um, or where, where, whenever he's played. And that's why we're having to play, play Conza out at right back and because it, it just works better for the team. So Conza being out is a huge, huge loss. And, you know, we've got Chelsea and Man United um, this week. It, it could be a bit of a season-defining week and to, to not have Ezra Conza in, in the squad for, for those two games is, is huge. Yeah, it's massive, man. It really is. And I still think you know, um, that Villa will be fine. I must admit, like, Ollie Watkins, I just, I really like watching him, man. I must say, I really do like watching Ollie Watkins and I think he's getting better each time I see him. I've always had some doubts in terms of some of his attributes, but he's really put me to, to kind of shame in what I've been saying. And I've always said that I preferred Ivan Tony, Alexander Isak. And I think some people would probably say, yeah, fair play. But I look at Ollie Watkins and think, yeah, you're right up there, man. Like, this season, he has been, he's been really good, man. Um, before I come to a couple of last questions before we close. Lawless, you're, uh, you're jealous, aren't you, of Aston Villa? I can see. You're jealous. You, you'd rather West Ham be in their position. The whole time Billy was talking, I'm thinking, yeah, talk about Champions League. You could, like, absolute dream of West Ham being in the Champions League. It, it's, it's, I know you always like to give Billy some smoke, but I can see jealousy in the eyes, man. Look at it. I can see it. So were they not jealous of us when we were in that position a couple of seasons ago? I don't know. I'm not a Villa fan, mate. But yeah, we, at the we, moment, we you were are. in that very position. You are. you are. Why can't you just admit it? You'd rather, you'd love to be where Villa are now. Listen, wouldn't you? I've been there. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt, right? Been there. Cool. Well done. Did you win a trophy? Win win a trophy first and then we'll talk, right? Before Enjoy your little we were four for, you know, three months. We've been there, mate. But you're not going to get top four. It's not happening. We were second. Can you get a top five? Can you get a top five? Yeah, they, I mean, they, they they could get top five, but, you know, like I said, that, me, Andy, Carol, now he's switching it on. You could maybe do a madness, Dan. Don't count yourselves out. Don't you start flirting with my players, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want you know, mate. No chance. Yeah. I, be, I actually think, Billy, I think if you win on Sunday, uh, I think it's, it's done. It's done. I think it, honestly, Philly, I think if you win on Sunday, I think it's done. I think, I honestly think, it's done. You'd be too far ahead of us mm. to for us to try and uh, uh, make it make a break and try and catch up. Yeah, what so would it be eleven points? points. Would it eleven be 11 points, points, yeah, yeah. Eleven points. It's, yeah, that's true. It's, 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 it's United's it's, biggest it's, game of the it's season. A disaster for you to for you to then catch up, wouldn't it? For us, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. To drop off that much, it'd just be a complete. It's not going to happen, win. mate. You beat us on Sunday. You, no chance. No chance of you not finishing outside the top. Who, who else is going to catch them? Because Newcastle, as Pete has alluded to, me. Newcastle and Man United have been exactly the same this season. Injuries, inconsistencies, nowhere near it. Um, Brighton won't do it. West West Ham, with the greatest of respects, Lawless, you're not going to get top five. If they if they win on Sunday, it's done. I think it's done. Simple as yeah, that. Yeah, but Pot said that you Newcastle are going to have this amazing comeback. Like, you know, after January, they're going to get players back. They're going to have a resurgence. So, 
That's what I, I love thought. this. We're talking about Villa and now you talk about someone else I said a few months ago. This is brilliant. Oh, I'm just saying, like, you know, you're downplaying Newcastle, Dan, but Potts told me that they're going to have a big resurgence uh, towards the end of the season and they're going to go on a mad run. So, you know, you got to... Make sure they don't finish above you, mate, because, you know, that's that's going to be embarrassing because you've been bigging up saying, oh, Newcastle, we're miles off. They're nine points. Nine points. Now it's free, mate. Make to, sure to, they to be do. Fair, Lawless, to be fair, Lawless, I, I, I said that. I said that from way back. I said, get through January and we'll have a good run. We just can't keep players fit. You're allowed to say get, that. Though, a couple Pete. of players back, a couple of players injured. Like, to be fair, like, I, I think I'm not the allowed to say that. I, I would have had us. I would have had us to go on a run, not for Champions League. I've, I've said Champions League. We reevaluated that, n- not a chance. But we we could have gone on a mad run, but not. We can't keep players fit. I've got to drill into that for the season. Like it's just it's, it's just it one of those. Funny. Just it mad. would be funny to see everybody looking mad. down at West Ham at the end of the season, though, wouldn't it? It would be quite funny. <laughs> just to look at everybody you? looking down, going, "Oh, hello, little bro. How are you down there?" <laughs> it would be quite funny. Yeah, yeah. In, in your wildest dreams, but you can look down, right? But let's let's just wait until the Europa League is done, because boy, if you look down us on the table and we've got a Europa League. I ain't hearing shit from anyone. That's all I'm going to say. You're not going to it. Unless you win it. You're, You're not going to win the Europa League, though, though, are you? You're not going to win it. They've got a chance. You've just been, you just been moaning back. about David Moyes playing the ball back to Ariola and Zuma playing keep you up. <laughs> how, how are you going to go and win the Europa League? It works in if Europe. they get a full fit squad, they've got, they've got half a chance. It, it works. Our, the way we play football, it works in Europe. Our, our way of playing works. It's, it's, it's designed for Europe, right? That's why we've been so successful in Europe. So, listen, as much as I complain, we've got a good track record in Europe. I don't count us out of this Europa League, regardless, yeah? I've seen what we do in Europe. So, look, I'm just saying, you better hope that all of your wishes and dreams come true, that we don't win a trophy, that we are below everyone, because anyhow, I don't care. If we finish above Newcastle, you're done, Potts. You are done. I'm not even coming for Pete. I'm coming for you. So just watch, just watch, because you'll get in the smoke. I just think it'd be nice to see Billy Billy celebrating some silverware finally, Pete getting back into Europe. I just want to see you mudded. I don't care about anybody else. I just want to see you absolutely in the mud, in the river, crying your eyes out, crying for Moyes out. One minute, they're passing the ball between Ariola and Zuma. The next minute, I think we might be able to win the Europa League, though, you know. I think I think that, that football will work in the Europa League against Bayern Leverkusen yeah. and Liverpool. That is going to work. That's good. We're going to do it. I think we can do it. Liverpool, Liverpool couldn't beat you. So I'm sorry, but Liverpool are already already blowing out their ass, right? So they're gonna probably win the Carabao. Then they're gonna be prioritizing the league. I, I think they're gonna peter out of the Europa League. I, honestly, I think everyone's just nailing on your Liverpool to win the Europa League in the FA Cup. In the they're doing the quad, apparently. Are they gonna sustain father. the quad? Quad father. Yeah, quad are they really gonna sustain a quad? Who they got in the FA Europe Cup? is going to give, mate. Europe is going to give out. I don't know. I'm telling you. Is it Downside like Hampton or something like that? You've got, yeah. you got someone. Billy, can I, ask, can I ask you a question about the, the weekend? Obviously, for, for me, you lost against Newcastle. I kind of feel like Sheffield United where they are at the moment. It was a great result, but we can't look past that. Is there any is there any part of you? Pots, I'm not going to say. <laughs> Why are you, I'm not I'm not saying anything. What I'm saying is, are you worried Sunday at all? Uh, I'm I'm always worried, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, I think He's always worried. That... He's always worried. <laughs> I think it's not Hibs. It's not Hibs, but, you know, it is Man United. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we needed that result against Sheffield United because our confidence and everything, obviously, with, with the dodgy run that we've had, we, we suffered them up we, for you, by the way. You're welcome. You're welcome. We suffered them up. They got Chelsea you. before us, Lawless. That's that's yeah. something I am banking on that you're playing midweek. That's what, especially especially with you saying that there's no cons there. Okay. Yeah. Um. But no, we like I said, we needed that result just for a bit of confidence, and we needed to win not just one or two and just get over the line. We needed a, a five nil, if not more, um, and which we got. We were we were top quality. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm confident. I'm, yeah, I'm confident going in. Cons is obviously a huge, huge loss, but we're also at Villa Park. I think the, the Newcastle game was just one of them. We were horrendous. Newcastle turned up and did a job on us. Um, 
I don't necessarily have the same confidence that United will be able to to do a job on us. Um, so hopefully we can we can come out the other end with three points. A draw probably not the worst result either. Um, I just we just can't afford to lose really. Just keep your, that gap your run of pictures, mate. After yeah. United in the league are, are, are great. Have you got Fulham? Yeah. yeah hang on, you got you got Fulham. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Fulham, <laughs> Fulham, Forest, Luton, mind you, Luton away. I think I think Villa yeah. will beat you. I think Villa will beat United. I think Villa will beat United. And I think United will be We have to United. really. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, well, Man United have to if they want to try any glimpse of, of, of dreaming yeah. for that position. And I think Villa just have to do it. If they win that, the top five I think is done anyway. But I think the top five is 100% sewn up, man. I think Villa and Spurs are going to get fourth and fifth. And I think it'll be Arsenal, Liverpool and City. Um, although Lourdes thinks that Arsenal are going to be down fighting with West Ham and Newcastle. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's quickly get predictions um, for West Ham, Arsenal, Lawless. We might not have a chance probably Wednesday when we speak. We'll probably talk more. But what are you saying for that, brother? No, my confidence should be low. Um, but, yeah, I think that we have to win. So this is the best time for us to bounce back. So I'm going to say with Paqueta back, 2-1 West Ham, 3-0 in the grand scheme of things in the trilogy of the Declan Derby. We do it again, third time in a row. Like I said, you may you may get your little win back, but it's a consolation at this point because we've already beaten you twice this season. But I think we do it. Just say that again. What? I'm saying, go on, go on, Sam. Go on, Sam, get your little clips out. Come on, clip me. Because it doesn't matter. Because we're beating you twice. So you can have the one. But you ain't getting it because Paqueta is back. Right? And we need to win this game. 2-1 West Ham. Right? Like I said, if somehow you win, somehow you come to London Stadium and do it, it's a consolation at this point. I don't want to hear no chest. I don't want to hear no banter from you. I don't want you fright in my face because we're beating you twice. You can't chat shit. No coming in my mentions. No nothing. Just take your little win, humble yourselves and move forward because we've beaten you twice. Have some shame. But that's not going to happen. That's yeah. not going to happen because 2-1 West Ham. Right? We're doing it. So, yeah. Interesting, man. I'll go 2-1 Arsenal. Uh, Dan United, what are you saying? Arsenal Villa. Uh, Arsenal Villa. Man United Villa. If we'd have had Martinez, I'd have been a bit more confident of getting something from there. But do you know what? I'm I'm back my club much this season because it's been such a terrible season. I'm going to go two apiece, two apiece. Okay, interesting. I think, I think Hoy, Hoyland's well, you in just went, I'm not going to back my club this season. And I then said I've not backed my club this season properly. I know, but I then I thought you was going to go and back your club, and then you still yeah. didn't back your club. <laughs> <laughs> you still you still back to draw. <laughs> two all, two all, two all. If if Oilers, I'm talking. This guy. Um, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna back my club actually. Uh, oh fuck off! We have to listen to you against my God. What'd you say? Go on, Billy. What'd you say? Two one. Oh right, I thought you said four. I was gonna say. Wow. 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 <laughs> Two one. Fair play, man. Fair play. Big up, Billy. Got some chest. Look, he needs to go on holiday to get his chest out. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, listen, boys, we're going to wrap it up, man. It's been a pleasure. I know it's the late one tonight, but, uh, you know, LB's team were uh, uncourteous and went and played on a Monday night. Uh, big up to Man City, of course, earlier for winning Arsenal this weekend. Did what they had to do. Um, and, uh, well, let's be real. Dan United, I've got to say. You've had a nice, enjoyable show for the first time in what has felt like forever for you, mate. It felt like forever for me, so what must it felt like for you? Big up to you, man, and big up to everybody. Big up to Dan United, big up to Pete. Big up to Lawless, big up LB, and to, of course, Errol and Billy. Big up, man, for jumping on at this early over there, man. I really appreciate that, my bro. And um, listen, we'll, uh, we'll see you all next time. Uh, make sure you go follow all these guys. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and um, do exactly the same over at Loaded Mag, over at Dan's channel, over at It's LB, West Ham Fan TV, and of course Total Screamers. We'll see you next time. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>